In this video, we'll take a look at how to calculate and interpret the effect size for the independent samples t-test in SPSS. And in this brief example, we have 10 people, five of which received a tutor and five who did not have help from a tutor. And after uh, a specified amount of time, they took a quiz. So what we want to do here is run the independent samples t-test. And in that process, we'll have SPSS calculate the effect size for us. And in case you're not familiar with this, here I have labels showing, and you can click on this button here. And what I did was I originally entered ones and twos for these two groups respectively. And then I went to the values box, and I entered one is no tutor, and then two is a tutor, and so on. And then when I go back to my data view window, if I click on this button, it shows me the labels instead of the numbers. But SPSS, quote, sees the numbers, and that's what it analyzes. Okay, so let's get started. So we go to Analyze, and then Compare Means, and then the Independent Samples t-test. And here we want to move our quiz score, the dependent variable, to the test variables box, and then Method, our tutor and no tutor here, we move to the grouping variable box. And then we click Define Groups. And in this version of SPSS, SPSS intuits that we want a one and a two for our two groups, where we used to have to enter these manually. And that's correct, so let's go ahead and click Continue. And then notice here, this is the important thing, estimate effect sizes. This is a newer feature in SPSS, and by default it's checked. So let's just leave that checked because we do want the effect sizes to be interpreted. Click OK. And then here we get our output, and what I've done is I went ahead and copied and pasted this into another document, and I marked it up a bit to make it a little easier to digest. So let's take a look at that. So here's our document where we have the three tables of output. And in yellow here is all information that's relevant to the effect sizes. And then in teal here is the information that's relevant to the significance test, the independent samples t-test, which we'll briefly note at the end. Okay, so notice here the no tutor group got an average score of 3 on the quiz. The tutor group got an average score of 7. That mean difference, 3 minus 7, right here is a negative 4. And then here we see independent samples effect sizes. It says Cohen's D. We see what's called the standardizer. And it says Cohen's D uses the pooled standard deviation. So we're going to want to use this value. It's the pooled standard deviation. And then this is the actual effect size, our point estimate. I'll talk about that more in just a minute. But let's go ahead and scroll down here and look at the formula. So the formula for Cohen's D for the independent samples t-test is really the first mean minus the second mean for the two groups respectively, group one mean minus group two mean, over the pooled standard deviation. So again, the first group mean is three, the second group mean is seven, so we get that right here, three minus seven, and then the pooled standard deviation, you see that here, which refers to this value, the 1.22474. So we have 3 minus 7 over 1.22474, or negative 4 over that value, which gives us a negative 3.266, or if we take the absolute value, which is typically done when reporting the effect size in research, we get 3.266. And what that means is, if we go back up here and look, we see the tutoring group scored higher on the quiz than did the non-tutoring group. So what that means is that, interpreting this, students who had tutoring, or the tutoring group, scored, if I round this to two decimal places, 3.27 standard deviations higher on the quiz than those who did not have tutoring. That's a very large effect, 3.27 standard deviations. Uh, and here is Cohen's effect size standards. You'll often just see this first value reported, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0.8, but I placed the ranges here uh, to make it a little bit more clear. So a small is 0.20 to 0.49, a medium is 0.50 to 0.79, and a large is 0 0.80 and above. Again, these were just rules of thumb proposed by Cohen. The actual effect size can differ for different disciplines, but in the absence of more knowledge about the discipline, these are rules of thumb which are frequently applied. So our effect size of 3.27 would definitely qualify as large, or really very large, if I wanted to 
describe it that way. And then finally, if I look at these values here, my T is negative 5.16, my DF is 8, and my, whoops, this is the wrong value. I don't want to highlight that, but I want to highlight this one. Now, they look the same for all intents and purposes, but we're going to use the two-sided P, which is the most commonly used one, or two-tailed test. These will differ if you double-clicked on these in SPSS you would see that they're not exactly the same, but when rounded to three decimal places, they both qualify as being less than 0 0.001. So that's why they're identical there as reported. Okay, so these values here, degrees of freedom of eight, T of negative 5.164, and a P less than 0 0.001. We could say, just to, uh, for the sake of being complete here, regarding the independent samples T test, we could say that it was statistically significant, T of eight, Degrees of freedom equals negative 5.16, and P is less than 0 0.001. Okay, which we can confirm here, Five, negative 5.16, less than 0 0.001, with 8 degrees of freedom. Okay, that's it. Thanks for